Welcome to the last in our series, I Need You to Share, Christ's Call to Speak. We have looked at the last few weeks what it means to talk about sharing our faith effectively, the power in sharing those stories and what common fears we have and how scripture and data from surveys helps us at least overcome mildly anyway those fears. Today we're going to talk about a thing called the mutual consolation of fellow believers. But to start, I want to share, or I want you to imagine a time in your life. Maybe you don't have to imagine it. Maybe it's real for you. So I'd like you to look back. I'd like you to remember a time in your life when you were going through something difficult. Whether it be a challenge in life, whether it be some difficulty that you were facing in health, whatever it was, do you remember the moment when you either heard of or learned of someone else who had went through the same thing that you had? Do you remember the relief that came over you when you heard that someone else was still living, that they had made it through this, that their faith was still intact, that things were still maybe going to be okay? The sense of relief that comes from knowing we're not alone, from knowing that we're not the only ones who have faced this or gone through this is a powerful, powerful thing. And so even more so, Even more so is the fact of when we talk about and share the things and the moments in which God has been at work. How much more then, when we talk about faith, is that thing true as well? I like to think about it maybe like a boat in the ocean. What rises when the tide goes up and withdraws when the tide goes down. You know, God has given us the ability to share and speak, and when we do that, God uses those moments to encourage, to lift up, to swell our brothers and sisters in Christ up towards Christ, so that then they might see Him more clearly, might experience His love and His grace in their moment of need, more palpable, more real. It's a beautiful thing, and Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians. In chapter 12, he's talking about spiritual gifts, and then he starts talking about the different members of the body. This is that passage that says, the eye cannot say to the hand, the feet cannot say to the hand, that we all need the different parts of the body. He starts, for the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so too is Christ. On and on he goes, and then he says, so that there may be no division in the body, but the members may have mutual concern for one another. If one member suffers, everyone suffers with it. If a member is honored, all rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body, and each of you is a member of it. But that the members may have mutual concern for one another. It's this beautiful picture of the power of the relationships that we have as members of the body of Christ, that God can actually be at work in and through us for the benefit of other people, that those who are mourning might have people to mourn with them so that they do not mourn alone, that those who are rejoicing may have people who rejoice with them so they don't rejoice alone. This idea of mutual consolation of the brotherhood or mutual consolation of believers was one that Luther talked about. So I want to read you a little bit of what Luther talked about in this mutual consolation of the people of God. He writes, It is a value to be reminded of the above observation and also frequently to stress it because of those who are who either themselves experience such trials or whose duty it is to console others who are overwhelmed by them. Scripture expressly tells us to encourage the faint-hearted, 1 Thessalonians 5.14, and that a dimly burning candle should not be quenched, Isaiah 42.3, but rather nurtured. The Holy Spirit knows that the devil is fully mobilized and that he attempts every hour of the day to assail us with such thoughts of despair and dejection. Therefore, the Spirit reminds and admonishes us everywhere that Christians have authorization from God himself to teach and console one another. One more time. The Holy Spirit reminds and admonishes us everywhere 
that Christians have the authorization from God himself to teach and console one another. And so we too must exercise consideration and concern among ourselves. You should listen to me according to God's command when I comfort you in whatever battle or peril you may be, and you should believe me. I, on the other hand, should listen to and believe you when I find myself in a similar emergency. I am indeed a doctor of theology, and many tell me that they were signally advanced in their knowledge of Holy Scripture through my help. But I have also experienced that I was helped and cheered through a single word of a brother who believed himself to be in no sense my equal. There's tremendous weight in the word of a brother which in an hour of emergency he adduces from Scripture. For Holy Scripture's inseparable companion is the Holy Spirit who moves hearts in more than one way and consoles them through the word. Two things I want to reflect on with you there. First, Luther writes that you, as you baptized believer and follower of Jesus, you have the power and the authority of God. You have the authorization from him to console your brothers and sisters. You don't have to send them to somebody else. You don't have to send them to the pastor. You don't have to send them to anyone. God has authorized you to do that. He's given you what you need. You have the power to go now and to do that in his stead. The second thing that we see here is that Luther says, it doesn't matter if you're a doctorate in theology. It doesn't matter if you don't have a high school diploma. If you never went to school at all, it doesn't matter how young, how old, how mature, how immature, wherever you come from. When we're in the body of Christ, we're all the same. And that means each of us has the power, each of us has the ability to console one another with the words of Scripture. Because where the Scripture is, there the Holy Spirit is. And wherever the Holy Spirit is, there is comfort and peace beyond all circumstances, beyond all understanding. And so as we close our time together, I want to recall just again the importance of what we've looked at. That Christ not only calls us, He commands us, But he desires us to speak, not just for the sake of those people outside the church that they might know of him and hear of his good news, the gospel message of salvation in Jesus, but also for those people in the church, that they might be consoled, that they might be encouraged. And so we seek to do this. We seek to share. We seek to tell. We seek to talk about all that God has done tactfully, with insight, with practice, perhaps even. All of it, so that God can use us for the sake of those people around us, so that we can serve other people. Let me pray for you as we end our time in this series. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and praise that you have decided that you have chosen to use us, poor, sinful, broken people though we are. But yet, you chose us. And so I pray that you'd send your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and our souls to give us the confidence of faith, the boldness of faith, and the clarity that comes from your Spirit alone. Help us declare your word to those who need to hear it. Help us encourage our fellow brothers and sisters in you, Jesus, that their souls and their bodies, their very lives may be brought and drawn closer to you. So let us go from this place. Send us out, Lord for your kingdom's work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make sure you like this video. It helps other people find it. And make sure you subscribe as well, just so that you do not miss another one of these videos. God be with you this day.